All right. And we are live. Uh, good evening, everybody out there on Hello, the internet. Side this side of the screen. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello. Hello, from Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> we have our first our first guest tonight. Um uh, Martin Bushel came along to hang out with us tonight, so very, very cool to have you on. So you, uh, you've officially christened the show here. We haven't haven't delved out of this since I started all that, so very well, glad, glad to have you on. Bud. Glad to be here, and thank you for the invitation. You know, Michael and I know each other a little bit, and Nate's nice to make your acquaintance. Absolutely. Very nice to meet you. I've definitely seen you, heard you talk a couple times, and... Uh, Big fan of the Daily Jaws and what you guys do. Huge fan. Well, we're, we're actually Amity Jaws group. M Michael makes that mistake because I think me and Ross are both English, but we're yeah, actually the that. Amity Jaws group. Yes. I, the first time I, I did, uh, one. I did uh, Amity Jaws group. I did a Q and A, and I kept calling Martin Ross. And oh. It wasn't. It wasn't until like the third time when I caught it, and but he, he was he was very. He was very kind. He, he he didn't yell at me or, or call me a wanker or anything like that. Just, <laughs> just guys, I'm I'm much yeah. better looking. Just just think of it that way. I'm much better looking than Ross. So just just get that, get that in your head. There you go. I mean the only I mean I know I know a lot of of uh, uh, British uh, Jaws fans, but the only ones I've ever I've ever talked to are are Martin and and Ross, and then I'm really good friends with Eddie McCormick, and hmm. Eddie Eddie's from Liverpool, so he sounds nothing like these two guys. So it's easy. <laughs> He's a, I always think I'm talking to Ringo when I talk to when I talk to Eddie, but um, yeah, I think it's great. We got some got some knowledgeable guests on, and oh uh, yeah, no doubt. Pop on soon, and we'll we'll have fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, we'll start uh, rolling things out. So you know, it was back and forth. I I usually try and contact Mike, or he contacts me throughout the week, trying to come up what we're going to talk about and. I, I try to do a little, a little deep dive, a little search. What's been going on, you know, in recent, uh, you know, history and with back in the day, kind of more, you know, pop and culture and stuff. And perhaps like in our era, like when we grew up, and I was really doing a dive, and you know, just kept coming up. And I thought, hmm, we're on back in the day, and I'm not really doing Joe's. Like, should we do Joe's? So I said to Mike, I said, you know, Joe's 48 is coming up, and he was like, you know, perfect. Like, how can you not do something pertaining to this? So. So, uh, exactly. Exactly. So, so the the one thing I wanted to do, to, one thing I was going to try and do tonight was, you know, um, if you're seeing a lot of the different podcasts and watch a lot of different shows, is uh, definitely hit on some of the classic things we often talk about, like you know, when you first saw it and what it really means to you. But trying to hit on maybe some some newer information or something a little bit more, I don't know, something hasn't been kind of uh, maybe hit nearly as hard tonight. So. I try and kind of weave us through topics, but I, yeah, start to head off in one direction or another, then then so be it. It'd make for a good good conversation. So it should be a fun evening. Yeah, absolutely. No I'm doubt. trying to bring us. I'm trying to bring us up on my phone so I can see the comments. That's. I'm trying. I'm not being rude. I apologize. Yeah. No. It's uh, with yeah. And with with uh, I'm using the Streamyard app, and with Streamyard, unless they okay to uh, acknowledge their name, their name doesn't come through, so it's hard to see who's on who's not sometimes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like take take survey. Oh, here we go. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I can work it out. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I'm a school teacher. I, I I had to zoom through, and uh oh, we just lost him. Uh oh, we lost Martin. I didn't touch anything. I promise. I'm not sure. Maybe he lost connection or something. We'll see if he pops back on. So, not sure what's going on. Uh oh. All right. Uh, we do have a couple people here. We got uh, good evening, Nate and Michael. Hey, good evening. Good to see you. Um, I just shot a last minute message. I made a little mistake. I think I kicked this. I have to choose which site this goes to, and it'll only shoot over to one. And I kicked it over to Let's Talk Jaws. That's pretty smart. I have him back. I literally hey, sorry about that, buddy. No, that's my fault. I say, I'm literally, I'm not tech savvy, and then I boot myself out of the chat. So that's just, I'm going to leave everything alone. I'm just going to keep my hands in, in my pockets. No, hey, you're, hey, you've got the link. So if something happens, just hop back on, and we'll. Uh, I'm just glad it wasn't my fault. So I feel better about that. That was 100 percent me. That's just just it'd be a tech idiot right right here. So, but anyway, I'm back. Uh, at any rate, so. Yeah, so um, so Martin, can you give us a little background on you with all of this? I mean, I know a little bit about you, but to be honest with you, not a whole lot. 
Yeah, so, you know, I started the Amity Jaws group. Uh, it'll be five years in August. Um, just because I was on a few Jaws pages and I didn't, I'm not going to name any names, but I didn't like the vibe. There was like, somebody would put a post up there, hey, what do you think of a Jaws remake? And, and pe people would just be so... Uh, venomous towards them i just i just didn't get that vibe so um i kind of just said well i'm going to start my own jaws page and let's just see what happens i had no no um expectations no i didn't have any great plan i said i'm starting a jaws page and we latched on very early to the amity means friendship you know idea so we try to keep it drama free you know, we nip any kind of, you know, Facebook as a whole can, can be quite toxic, right? It's very, it's very easy to be brave behind the keyboard. It's very easy to say things when there's really no repercussions. So we really kind of latched onto that amity means friendship. And we try to nip any negativity or drama in the bud. We talk about Jaws. We do allow off topic things from time to time. Um, and, you know, we're going to be five years in August and we're, we're closing in on 19,000 members. I expect it to be 20,000 members probably by our fifth year, which is, uh, incredibly qu quick growth you know 4,000 members a year we're extremely interactive um, we have competitions we have Q&A's we do movie nights um, you know we just watched Jaws 3 I, I know it's terrible this past uh, <laughs> Saturday we had like 600 comments in, in 90 minutes I mean people people uh, just want to talk about Jaws, any of the Jaws movies so it's been a great thing you know we've reached out you know I made great friends like Michael. There are people in the Jaws community that are just phenomenal people. Um, so that's really what Amity Jaws Group is about. It's a, it's a. We try to keep it fun. We try to keep it light. Uh, we definitely don't get involved in any of the in, any of the drama of you know what Facebook fandom can be. And um, you know we've had, we, we've had a great time. And, and our group, Amity Jaws Group, has so far surpassed you know what I thought it could be. Uh, anything that happens from this point on is just is just you know icing on the cake. It's just been a great labour of love uh, for the past you know almost five years. It's, it's just been a, such a, a blessing in my life uh, when I really didn't think it would be anything more than just hey, I might see a few Jaws photos I've not seen. I might learn a few things about Jaws that I didn't know. I didn't expect to be talking to Carl Gottlieb or, you know, I'm going to New York in September. We're going to watch the, the the shark is broken. You know, Ian Shaw's already reached out to me. We've had a conversation. I mean, this is, this is great stuff. I'm a kid from London that moved to the States about 20 years ago. And this is just, it's just great. It's just, it's just, for me, it's, it's just been a great, great labor of love. That's awesome. And, 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 you know, your, your growth and what you have going on, I mean, really, really speaks to, Obviously, what you're doing is obviously very good and very positive. And I 100% agree on how bad Facebook can get. And I think that that's, you know, the fact that you, you, you took that step to try and avoid that, that situation, which, which unfortunately happens way too regularly. It's very, very I mean, we, 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 we've, all, we've all seen it. If you've been on Facebook for any amount of time or, you know, I know, I know Michael's experienced it. We've all experienced it, you know, people latching on and, and, and not having the best intention. And the, the true listen if you're a Jaws fan or a Star Wars fan or Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter whatever it is if you love the franchise you love the movie you're just about spreading the positive word you don't want to get into this back and forth you know silliness is what it's just what it is we're all adults here let's just enjoy the movies for what they are and have fun and we can have different opinions right I'm very I'm very open about my dislike of you know anything past Jaws 2 but you know if somebody likes it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know put my opinion on them if you like it you like it more power to you what a what a horrible night for me to bring joe alves on no, <laughs> <laughs> now i love joe from jaws one joe, joe is a legend to me because of jaws one <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey 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 keep hey, there. Everybody. Nice, keep. hey everybody <laughs> hey, yeah, to see you, Keith. one thing yeah. that i noticed that, that mark brought up is that People seem to be like sharks. They seem to be territorial. And as I say a million times, um, none of us own Jaws. <laughs> you know, we, we're here to talk about our love for the film. Um, that's why uh, our sites, uh, mine, uh, Ross, Keith, Martin, we're, we're drama free. We, we look at it. We look at them daily and we try to keep the, the drama out of the way. Um, when when um, when somebody innocently asks a question about the shooting star, um, <laughs> you know, and, that guy. Yeah, and people start. I mean, it was like uh, uh, in March, uh, Richard and, and Jeff Kramer were here, and they did a Q and A. And this young girl, she was probably I don't know, uh, 
1920. And she asked, she asked it wrong because she was not aware that, that all that stuff was filmed day for night. So mm-hmm. she asked, did you see the shooting stars when you were filming? And of course the, the idiots in the yard are like, Oh, boo, that's a stupid question. Don't you know? No, she didn't know. She asked the question. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the dumbest question I heard that day. The dumbest question <laughs> from a guy in his thirties, forties who said, now you remember um, in the film, uh, all the drama came uh, when Mrs. Kintner slapped Brody because he hadn't slapped the, he hadn't closed the beaches. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Jeff or Richard said, yeah, I remember that. And, and the, he asked, if you had played that part, would you have closed the beaches? And they looked at each other. <laughs> and finally, Richard said, I, I just do whatever the script tells me. But, but <laughs> the guy seemed to think that, that you know, Alice Kinder died because Roy Scheider didn't close the beaches. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's well, hilarious. Here, uh, here today, we're it's having... Done. That's Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Uh, yeah, this is uh, a house couple tonight. comments. That's some fun. It's couple some comments fun. on here. Number one, oh, Martin oh, got a couple people on here. Said big, big fans oh, of your page. Um, and Martin, someone's asking the name of your page. You want to repeat that? Let me just kind of throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, thanks, Nate. It's it's the Amity Amity Jaws group. Um, you know, we like I said, we latched onto the Amity part of it, which mean obviously means friendship, as we all know. So we really tried to keep it a, a friendly and light a light place. But yeah, Amity Jaws group, and you know, Michael and and Keith and Keith. Well, nice to meet. You. We actually not met each other. You know, uh, you know, I'm yeah. obviously aware of you, and you know, we've yeah. interacted. But nice to meet you as well. And you know, these yeah. guys have been so supportive. From you know, we try to support Jaws Fifty and let's talk Jaws live, and you, you, you know, because that's what it's all about. Like we said, and Michael said, we don't own Jaws, and we just want to spread the word of Jaws. I mean, it's a forty-eight-year-old movie, guys. I mean, you, you know, we don't own that. I was barely two years old when the movie came out, so you know, it's a uh, yeah, amateur Jaws group. And we'd love to have anybody over come over. We'd love to have you. Um, you know, we're all about you know mm-hmm. amity. There is a yeah, link yeah, on, the Jaws, on the Jaws 50 page. I put a link. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah. But just, yeah. You can just type in the search engine, Amity Jaws Group. And I agree. And, and this comment right here from Kelly is really what it's about. At least, you know, what obviously you're promoting, we're promoting. Yeah. We hear Jaws family, you know, Jaws Army the whole time. It's never, yeah, really trying to shy away from that, you know, all about me kind of attitude. Just not a fan. No. Anyway, uh, I'll throw a couple more comments up here, and maybe we'll kind of get a couple things going. So, Keith, good to see you, by the way, bud. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Nathan. Been a little while since I talked to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. And I want yeah. and I wanted to piggyback on what Martin said. You know, it's 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 about the love of the film. You know, I do have a lot of Jaws groups out there, but you know, we have a common a common goal, and that is to enjoy enjoy what this this this, this Jaws legacy has has come about, you know, it is such a legacy. Oh my goodness, it's such a legacy uh, this film is. And when it turns 50, oh my goodness. I mean, it's going to be great. I mean, good enough is for 48, 48 uh, uh, anniversary. Even Jaws 2 uh, did, uh, did the 45, just turned 45. So right. it's all about the love, you know, the love of the film. And, you know, we are passionate about it. and. And, and and it shouldn't be no us and them, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I I did did more than this person, did more than this other person. It shouldn't be about that, you know. See, we all should come together and and uh, express our love for the film. That's what it's all yeah, about. Because it's there there are very few films. I mean, mm-hmm. every film has has a fan base. Right. There are very few films that that have Facebook pages and and mm-hmm. fans that that fill Facebook and their social media with. You know, today's the forty eighth birthday. Um, you know, I was telling Nate, um, uh, June 20th is the 49th anniversary of Chinatown, mm-hmm. one, of the, one of the most perfect films ever made. Oh. And I don't see a Chinatown page on, on Facebook. Nobody posted Happy Chinatown Day. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> very, very, very true. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not a Jaws 3D fan. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I apologize. I hope I haven't started anything. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about positivity, and then I then I am crapping on Jaws 3 and 4. So, <laughs> hey, if you like those movies, more power to you. They're just not my favorite. I, for me, Jaws 1 and 2, they didn't make any more after that. I just I refuse to believe anything beyond Jaws 2. Yeah. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me, though. That's just me. I'm English. What do I know? <laughs> Same for Superman. Oh, Same man. for the Superman. Oh, uh, God. Well, you, well, you say that, but Don't Superman 3 with Richard Pryor, that's got a little oh. soft spot in my heart. Now, Superman oh. 4, <laughs> I agree, but Superman 3, Richard Pryor, come on. <laughs> Superman 3, hey, just you know what? the bad Superman. The bad Superman fighting, they're, they're fighting each other in the in the junkyard, and then he's got the, the dirty shirt, and he opens up the, the clean uniform. That just... That gets me every time. So. <laughs> that's, goose, that's goosebump stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> what about him? Everything. At the bar, drinking, drinking at the bar. Hey, hey, hey Superman he's needs to unwind as well. Right. <laughs> and he's flicking these peanuts like they're bullets in there. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 make, you're, you're making a case for it. You're not making a case against it. You're, you're yeah. making me want to watch it again. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 but Mike, we do love Godfather Part Three, right? I enjoy Godfather Part Three. Yeah, I admit, I, I, I admit, I broke into applause when Sofia Coppola got shot. But <laughs> he's, got he's got a few good moments. Well, uh, what, what about Rocky Four, guys? Come on, Rocky Four. Rocky Four. Not the Russian. Come, Come on. on. Russian. Oh. Oh, I still haven't seen the uh, the extended version yet. Yeah, the director's cut. I got to see that yeah. too. I remember okay. we ran that trailer. We ran that trailer on a View to a Kill, and it was just the two boxing gloves. The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah, they come together. Yeah, I remember. And they explode, and I would have people. I'd have four hundred people screaming "USA, USA!" I was like, "Jeez, all right. <laughs> that's it's amazing." A it's just a movie. <laughs> You know how you guys are, though. Anything you know, anything you love to USA, whatever's anything, you know. Sorry, 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 sorry. We won our independence from you so many years. Uh, too, <laughs> hey, hey, too, too soon, too soon. It's just, it's, 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 it's everybody calm down. It's everybody calm down. Right. We got five minutes out of Amy and his friendship, guys. Come on, come on. No, yeah, I'm talking about friendship. Now you guys don't want to kick me back to my own country. What's this about? Martin's going to put a stamp. Gonna put a stamp tax on anybody that joins in. Wow! <laughs> I'll be I'll be drinking my tea with freedom after we finish up here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Way to start off. It's like we went to high school together for God's sake. Wow! This good. is this is really this is really taking a t taking a turn. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm it's a good thing we all didn't go to high school. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, you guys, you guys were so much, so much older than me, anyway. So I would have been in kindergarten when you were in high school. So you know, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably oh the oldest. I'm probably the oldest one here. I think I'm <laughs> Mike, I'm older than you, right? Sixty-two. Oh, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> I'm fifty-eight. I'm fifty. So. Oh, I'm fifty. I'm fifty as well. You guys could be my dads. Especially <laughs> <laughs> <Well, laughs> <thank you>, Mike. <laughs> 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 anyway, good, yeah. anyway, moving on, moving on, yeah, moving yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, moving on. So let's get a let's get a couple slides together. And sorry, I'm trying to do this is all for fresh to me. Never had people, so if I things get a little blocked here, I apologize. I'll try and switch some things around here. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of let the discussion go in a little bit of a different direction. We could all talk again about when the first time we saw Jaws and and all that. I think that's really been hit an awful lot before. So. My question to you guys is, you know, obviously very seasoned um, fans is mm -hmm. now when you see Jaws, when you watch Jaws, whether it's I don't know, once a year, once every couple of years, a couple of months, what exactly do you look for that you still get that, um, you know, that thrill? What is it that you still really enjoy or what is it that you're still like, trying to do to get out of it these days? Because I, I find that, you know, I pulled up the other night and I was a little inspiration. I was talking to Mike about what to do. And I was like, I'm, I have the bigger boat cut. I'm like, I'm just going to flip that on and the TV on the background. And I always, you know, I find myself looking for certain things. What is it nowadays that when you watch it that you guys actually do look for? Mm. I, I look for editing, uh, editing errors, not editing errors, but mm -hmm. things that Carl Gottlieb pointed out in, in the Jaws log, mm -hmm. like the, the Alex Kittner attack and, and the waves are different. And then when the raft rolls up on sea and so you can tell it's a dirty different beach and mm -hmm. then the water's darker uh because you know they filmed them you know they filmed one in june and one in september um i i enjoy watching it more i like to watch it with an audience 
because usually a theater or, or two will bring it back. And I enjoy oh, yeah. the audience. Um, usually I'm involved and I'll do a, a presentation and show memorabilia and talk. And I'll mm-hmm. always ask who has never seen this movie before. And those are the people, those are the people I will watch because I love the fact that, that, you know, 10, 11, 12 year old kids are having the same reaction that I had when I was 15. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, and a guilty pleasure when I watch it, I like to watch, um, like a Monty Python skit. The cat just walked by. Oh, the cat. Oh, the cat. The cat ate it. Um, but, um, I like when Brody's on the phone and Hoop, uh, when he's waiting for Hooper to come in and Hendrix is outside the window and he throws the screws or pebbles at the window mm-hmm. and Jeff just turns and goes, it's like, <laughs> perfect. That's just, that's just a great scene. It's like you, you, you know, I don't even know if it said, you know, Hendrix waves or what, but it was just, I just love that. It's like just a little bit in a film that I love so more, so much that I look for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, there's a couple of scenes now that as I'm older, you know, there's a great, the great scene when Hooper comes with two bottles of wine and Hooper says, I'd love to speak to your husband. And Ellen Brody says, yes, yeah, so would I. It's, it's like such a, like a funny, you know, being married now 10 years, it's such a funny thing that, when I watched it younger, I didn't really catch that. You know, it, it's great. But for, for me, you know, and, I, and I've spoken to Carl Gottlieb and read the Jaws log and spoken to Joe Alves and, and done all these amazing things that, as a Jaws fan, is just great. But for me, I don't really look out for anything new. But for me, when Jaws is on, it, it's so comfortable. And I don't know if I can even explain this the way I mean. I mean, this movie's been in my life for as long as I can remember. I've seen it with my grandparents that are no longer here, my parents. Mm-hmm. I've seen it with cousins. I've seen it with friends. I've seen it in an audience with people I don't know. We've watched it on Amity Jaws Group. And it's just, it's such a part of, and this sounds really cheesy, but it's such a part of the fabric of society. I mean, it's an American film, but it's much more than Americana. It's an it's an international thing. Um, and it's just for me when it's on, there's a level of comfort there that I just don't get with with many other films. And I don't even need to, it can be on in the background and I'm getting that warmth from it. And that sounds really stupid and cheesy, but mm-hmm. I, if anybody understands what I mean, I think oh, it yeah. would, would be you guys. It's like, totally. it's like a friend. Totally. It's like a friend. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. One, yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, yeah, I often, uh, yeah, I'm a school teacher, so I'm often sitting doing work and I'm not a person who sits in total silence. Something's always running in the background and, Absolutely, one hundred percent. And, and um, whether it's the movie, whether it's part one, part two, whatever. Lately, it's been uh, I've been kind of involved in this. I'll pull up the old episodes of Mike and Jay and stream those in the background mm-hmm. and listen to it. And it, I totally get you about that entire warmth. It, it, it's a comfort that you don't really get from other things, at least from, from films and such. And 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 I can think of like like certain moments, like. Um, I took my son to see Jaws, and we saw it at a drive-in, which I grew up next to a drive-in. So for me, a drive-in is just, like, amazing. We saw it digitally at a drive-in. There I am with my, you know, my seven-year-old son. That was just, like, that was, like, a shining moment that I won't forget. The first time I was sitting in the theater in Edgartown watching Jaws, I mean, it was like I was the kid at the very top of the roller coaster. You know, stick with the anticipation as that thing is ready to go down in that big drop. I mean, it just, yeah, one hundred percent, completely agree with you, uh, without mm-hmm. a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, Martin. You know, I I, I don't uh, I don't look for it necessarily look for anything new. Uh, it's just like you like you say, um, uh, it's it's the warmth. It's the the warmth you get from it, and, and that's what I get. It's, it's probably the John Williams score. Mm-hmm. Uh, that 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 sets that sets it for me, uh, but the uh, whenever I watch it these days, it's it's when the three get on the boat and they spot the shark. You know, from there on on, you know, that's really for me. That's when the movie really takes off, and yeah. and um, uh, for me, uh, that's that's the that's uh, the highlight of uh, me watching it. I don't know if I'm, if I'm am I making sense here. Oh, no, for sure. Not. Yeah, totally. Uh, oh, one hundred percent. The music, the music is iconic. I mean, we go oh, to a ball oh my game. goodness, we go to a ball game, and and you know the organist will go, but um, of course my wife. Right. Um, <laughs> we were watching a, a, an old episode of Columbo where he mm-hmm. was oh, investigating yeah. a uh, 
a murder and there's a musician involved and he's talking about music and he goes, well, you know, music makes you feel things. What do you think going on when I do this? And he goes, dum, 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 dum. Mm -hmm. Columbo's like, uh, the fish, uh, the fish movie. It's like, <laughs> everybody knows it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not many movies that have that can, you know, almost 50 years old that can cut through any kind of a generation. You know, kids t today, you know, they, you know, you see on the on, on all the pages. Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm showing my 10 year old kid the Jaws for the first time, and they love it. And you know, it, you, you know, it, it cuts through generations. I mean, quality mm -hmm. quality lasts forever, right? And it's a quality movie. You, you know, it's just, it, I think it's I think it's probably one of a few perfect movies in my opinion i think it's and this is why you know f almost 50 years later you've got 25 jaws pages on facebook and people are excited to go to martha's vineyard in two years and people are talking about that i mean mm -hmm. i don't i can't think of another you know movie or franchise that has this kind of maybe star wars that just but this kind of rabid you know following all these years years later mm -hmm. yeah but they're all nerds yeah, yeah that's right yeah nerds exactly yeah, they're all nerds yeah all nerds. <laughs> and, and keith i agree with you to be honest with you I look at Jaws as two films. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you really yeah, have your I, first film. I agree with that. Which is, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is taking place there, and especially since I've been going to the we've, we've been going to the vineyard like every other year, just by mm -hmm. happenstance, went up there for a day. And my entire family's fallen in love with it. And when I'm there, and you're watching, and and the ferry is coming in and unloading right there in Oak Plus, and you know people are you know going up the promenade, and the police officers blowing the whistle, traffic cars. I mean. I, I can like pretty much put myself there. And, I, and so I start to pay attention to the people in the background, because as you guys know, it, most of you are just people that were on the island, you know, which was something that was kind of unheard of, just hiring them as extras. And so that's the first film. The second film starts as soon as Brody, you know, says, you got a pen, Larry, sign this. That's yeah. when the second film starts. And that's when you get in that whole thing. And some nights I only want to watch the first part, the first film. You know, I only want to watch the land version. And then the set, oh, there's other nights. I only want to see the worker chasing that thing down. You know, and I, 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 I yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, yeah. I agree too. Yeah. It's definitely two movies. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of moving on here. So, you know, you were really hitting about, about, you know, this hitting multiple generations and hitting newer generations. Mm -hmm. Let me even touch a little bit on on collecting, and, and you know we mentioned a little bit about Star Wars before, and, and Star Wars I think really kind of really kind of set off you know the toy craze as far as relating to movies, and there was definitely Jaws things out there. I mean I remember a couple things. I remember you know the Jaws game, you know with the with pieces you had to get out of its mouth, and I remember some of the shirts. Um, might flip a couple uh, things out to me, old puzzles, posters, and stuff, um, but. Tell you what, in the last ten years, the amount of things that have come out are just unbelievable. Well, if you guys, if you guys can give me about thirty seconds, I'm sitting in my jaws room, and if you, if you'd indulge me, I can just scan around and show you some of the things I've collected. I mean, this is this is over years. I mean, I've been in the states for twenty years. I haven't been collecting that long, but um, I, I've been collecting quite a lot. And if you guys can indulge me for maybe a minute, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just move the camera around and, and just show you some of the things I've got, if that's okay. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, just kind of stand Nate, up here. Nate, can you drop the... Okay, I was going to say, drop the comment, and there he is. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a bit of a way for me to change the camera here, the camera view, so it's not on me? No. Um, well, I'll try it. I don't know if this is really working. I'll try it this way, but... Mm -hmm. I could scan you out for a second if you want me to. you need time, or are you good? Well, yeah, I mean, if we can... Stretch, I don't really know how to reverse the camera, but it might be easier to... Um, just switch it. Oh, up. listen, you're fine, really. You turn right. around and walk around, you're good. Yep. So, so basically, it's my jaw, my jaws room. If you can see. Oh, nice. Wow. Nice. Wow. wow. Is that a quint back there? That's impressive. Yeah, this is. I, I have a friend uh, out in Texas that made this quint. There's only a couple of these on the in, in you know in the world, and he, he did the uh, Mayor Vaughan. And if you can see oh, this guy, wow, and, and then Hooper. Fun. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Wait a second. Let me get my pen. What's your address? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, and uh, wow, all, all kinds oh. of stuff. Uh, I made this oh. barrel, bought the barrel, made it myself. You know, painted it myself, and took it out to the to the uh, street where I live, and threw it down the street. And my neighbors thought I was crazy. Um, no yeah, wow. managed to get the the, the tracker. I don't think you can see it all, guys. I'm, I can't really see what I'm showing, but yeah, this is oh, this it, is. It's amazing. Is that a barrel? Is that a barrel? I see stuff. 
I see stuff that I've never I've never seen before. And that's yeah. that's another great yeah. thing about these pages but, that that people always you know oh I, I just bought this or I just found this at a flea market and you're like oh my god I didn't yeah. even know that existed. There you go, Michael. There's Joe, Joe Elves autograph on the Jaws two card. So you know I, I still love Joe, even though I give I forgive him for Jaws three. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's, this is you know I I went to a a, a Comic Con last weekend, never been to one. And I was wearing a Jaws T-shirt and, you know, people were asking me. And I said, oh, I just love Jaws. And mm -hmm. somebody turned me on to this uh, this uh, laser disc called a CED. I'd never heard of a CED. Yeah. And um, I found I found Jaws 1 and Jaws 2 on eBay on, on CED, which is like some kind of capacitant electronic disc. Yep. And I bought them on, on, you know, for $20 a piece. And I, I bought them and now they're in my collection. I can't play them, but yeah. that's, not the, that's not the reason you get the stuff. You know? the RCA one, right, Keith? Yep, the I had the RCA. Had to put the disc, okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly it. it in, and then it would pop out. Yeah, yeah I, that's I, exactly I, it. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd never heard of it. I wasn't aware of a CED ever. Right. That must have yeah, yeah. went past me. But Works. I saw, it, found them on Facebook, and I also bought a uh, Jaws two soundtrack on eight track oh, in, 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 in the packaging. Hey. Wow, oh, I remember those days. Yeah, so. So I mean I can't play these things, but that's not what it's about. I always say to my wife, look, if if things go you know barely up and I'm we're unemployed, this will this will get us through a few a few months at least. You know, if you're really on hard times, I'll give you ten bucks for that quint. Oh, well, I, I don't know if I'll be, I don't know if I'll be in that hard time, Michael. <laughs> I'd probably sell a kidney first. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. I, I gotta yeah. say, yeah, the the, the Quentin Mayor Vaughn just blowing my. I mean. Yeah, the mayor of uh, I, I guess I'll put my shoes away now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this guy, this guy <laughs> down in Texas, and he was on he was on the uh, on the Amity Jaws group, and he posted one day, and he had like he had like uh, three feet figures of like Gene Simmons and Elvis Presley. I was like, holy oh, shit, these are amazing! And he goes, oh yeah, but look at this one, and he showed me he showed me the quint. I said, I have to have it. What you know? So he made me one, and then. He does them. To, he does them to, to like to order. So none of them the same. Like the Quint is probably only three of those on the on, on the world. But the Mayor Vaughan, the Hooper, and the Chief Brody, they're, they're, they're one offs. And you can I don't know if you can see Chief Brody behind me. Amazing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Was that a barrel yeah. I saw? Was that a barrel? Yeah. Uh, there was a barrel over there that you know. Nice. Yeah, I bought I bought that barrel, and it's quite a, quite a funny story. And I painted it myself in my garage, and you know, of course, I wanted to beat it up and make it look like it's been used. So I took it out to the cul de sac where we live, uh -huh. and I threw it up in the air, and I was driving it, you know, dragging it across the concrete. My neighbors came out and said, "Martin, are you, are you okay? I mean, do we need to call?" They thought I was having some kind of like mental break where I was beating the crap out of the barrel <laughs> in the cul de sac. <laughs> so no, it's okay. It's still in my jaws room. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. These were made nice, by uh, uh, Pat Delaney, who's also an artist. Um, Very nice. Yeah, I've got the tiki, the tiki cup drinker. Oh, I have that one. Yeah, I have that one too. Over yeah. there, I have that one over there. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Here's um, I, I'm a craft beer guy. I don't know if any of you guys are. Um, a couple of friends and I are big on craft beer, and so you know, mm -hmm. anytime we go places, especially on vacation, we'll bring some back to share. And um, I'm I'm in Pennsylvania, and we went down to Maryland to do some fishing, and happened to hit a local brewery, and they happen to have Quince Revenge. Happen oh, to be a local beer that's that nice. Week. Oh, I don't no. have I don't have that. I need to get one of those. Wow. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I've only got uh, two cans actually. It's just a very small brewery in Maryland called Revelation Brewing, and they I, I would assume it's a seasonal beer. They brewed it in, in the summertime, and I saw that, and it's a sour type beer, which I'm not a big fan of. But it was coming home no matter what it tasted like. So it's <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt, home. no doubt. Yeah, and I came across a guy on Etsy who was doing some. He was doing some pint glasses for a brewery somewhere in California, some Jaws relation or Great White Shark, and he commissioned some um, pint glasses. Mm -hmm. I know, well, you oh, can very see cool. That. Yeah, very oh, cool. Is. Yeah. And, and, and I contacted the brewery and said, hey, I'd like to buy one, you know, so I'll you know, get some beer to go along with it. They said, sorry, we only had, I don't know, 30 of them. We sold out, whatever. But I'll put you in contact with the gentleman who made them, and I happened to contact him. And he had an Etsy account, and he said, yeah, I think I got, like, three of them left and, and shipped one out to me. And, yeah, so, yeah, it's really interesting. You run across stuff just, you know, haphazardly at times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, you know, Jaws. I think I think Keith and Michael were saying. I mean, Star Wars was the first movie that really embraced merchandising. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's obviously Jaws was you know what three three years before Star Wars, but now I mean, there's so much stuff out there. Uh, you, you know, it's just they're making stuff for Jaws, and that's the thing. I mean, again, almost fifty year old movie, and they're making merchandise. They 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 right. 
they got this little movie. This, I don't know if you saw this from Walmart last year. They got a little little TV that played like three or four scenes of Jaws. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, what the heck? You know. Yeah. So I mean, and that just proves the longevity of the movie, the quality of the movie. People are still interested, and I, I, and I guess it's because people of our age now have some disposable income, and we're going to waste some money on some Jaws shit. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know it's coming home no matter what. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Any of you guys ever had American right. set? Say again. I'm sorry. Any of you guys have had American set beer? No, I've got I, a couple. I've got a couple empty of the classic cans. I've never drank it. Never it's exactly same. I've got three empty cans, but I never tried it. Yeah. Oh, I have. Yeah, you can get twelve packs of it right now. It's out, distributed at least down up and down the East Coast. Um, and I even have. So I don't have to see a poster behind me. That's that's the original poster yeah. of American yeah, yeah, yeah. that came out a couple mm -hmm. years ago. And then I got the Crush It Like Quint um, foam can. But I've got a couple of yeah. cans. It's, it's all right. It's an old seventies lager. If you remember beer back then, it's pretty much what it tastes like. It's not horrible. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of flavor, but I don't. I don't mind it. I actually have a friend who's from Narragansett Bay area in Rhode Island, and, and uh, uh, I, I, I bike ride with him. And um, but he'll tell you where he's from. They call it Nasty Gansett. So. <laughs> <laughs> I always have some sitting around, though, just in case. So, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. So, all right, Move, uh, moving along here. Well, before we kind of stop talking about collections, um, Mike sent me a picture. It might be a little hard for the four of us to see, but you guys at home should be able to see it. Uh, pretty interesting background story. On the right side there, inside that circle, you see a black and white picture of a ring, a Jaws ring. Mike, tell us about that. Yeah, um... When uh, I proposed uh, to my wife in 2007, um, it was the third time that our group of friends that we'd all met at Jaws Fest in 2005 um, had been back to the island. Uh, in 2006, we did No Fest. And then in 2007, we called it Rest Fest. Well, in uh, 2006, um, uh, Becky Reiner, uh, and if you have The Shark is Still Working, when they show Jaws Fest, She's got the van, the Jaws van, the, the big white Jaws van they show all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Chevy, yep. Yeah. She met a, another fan named Bill Englert. And eventually, uh, one thing led to another. Uh, they fell in love. Um, when I proposed to my wife, I brought 20 of these rings. These are the rings you used to be able to buy in uh, bubblegum machines. And um, my son and I handed them out to our friends that were around there along with uh, my uh, engagement ring for my wife. Um, but uh, Becky kept her ring and she put that around her. Uh, that That's a picture of the ring around her wedding bouquet. And um, uh, I mentioned it and I wanted to show it um, because um, sadly Bill passed away Tuesday night. Um, oh, I don't know all the particulars. I know he was sick for a while, but I just thought how amazing that this film, this film that we love brought two strangers. Becky's from your neck of the woods, Keith. Becky's from Michigan. Okay. And Bill's from Long Island. If, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Jaws, these two probably never would have been met. Mm. And I just thought what an what a amazing, I mean, a tribute to both of them and a tribute to Jaws that, that, you know, it, it does, it does, you know, we all say it, it changed our lives in whatever way. Um, you know, I had to, I told, I told Richard Dreyfus that, and, and I told him that he had been a big influence on me and he was like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I made a good movie. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do Dreyfus, but no, but I explained to him all the reasons, all the reasons that I, the life I have and what I do and writing books and a website and everything else that all came because of Jaws. And he, he actually understood it at the end. He understood that. But I just yeah. thought that this this picture was just, uh, it's the perfect, the perfect, almost the perfect testament to to the power of this film. So, but I did want to, I did want to mention Bill's passing and um, uh, send our love to Becky and her family and uh, her daughter, Poe, and let her know we're all thinking about her. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's a very touching story, though. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, to kind of, I thought maybe we'd talk about 
talk a little bit about, you know, definitely, you know, things hitting us today, at least with me personally, I'm sure you guys have connections. Just some of the different podcasts and, and media that, that's out there and floating around. Obviously, we're a little bit part of, of that world. Some of the things that I, I come across, I'm a, a pretty active guy, a bit of an endurance guy, so a lot of times I'll be working out or something like that. I got something going on and lean, been leaning a lot towards podcasts and stuff. And and um, these are a couple that I've come across and watched some episodes on um, Daily Jaws, um, uh, the Jaws Minute. Um, I listened to that it's yes. a couple of years, mm-hmm. run by two guys. Um, very very impressive. Inside Jaws, which I think was as much about, honestly, about um, uh, Steven Spielberg as it was about the movie Jaws. Um and the latest one that I've really been hooked on for the last year is the Jaws Obsession. And he is also, um, the gentleman who runs that is also the gentleman who is the author of the Book of Quint. You guys familiar with that at all? Uh, which book? I didn't hear you. The Book of the Quint. Book of Quint. Mm-hmm. No, you told me about it. I have not read it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, it's amazing. I mean, these are all only a handful years old and they each kind of take on a little bit of a different um of a different uh, take on things now the um jaws minute or minute for jaws or whatever they, they literally go minute by minute of the film. Yeah. each episode is just based on a minute what's happening and then i mean they delve into the background like what's going on uh say with production you know what problems they were having what was going on with the actors and then the actual story itself and just really really impressive stuff so um and you guys Listen to or watch anything else, any of those, or anything beyond that? I, I got actually actually got invited to do the Jaws minute, and, and, I, and I couldn't do it. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I think the lady it runs that might be from, from England as well. But um, yeah, she I'm, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she invited me to, and unfortunately I couldn't do it. But um, which is disappointing. But I'm, I'm not I'm not a massive podcast guy. Obviously, I'm familiar with a couple of these, but I've not really listened to them. So I don't know if you guys have. Yeah, I listen to the Jaws minute. I've done. I've been on the Jaws minute, oh. and obviously uh, the Daily Jaws. And Nate, if you're looking for something to listen to, I'll do a, a cheap plug here. Um, last, uh, la- or late earlier last this month, Ross and I did a audio commentary for Jaws Two. Mm-hmm. It, it's now on on YouTube, and it's gotten a couple thousand listens already, and it's gotten some uh, really good comments. Um, so just cue up the movie and and listen to that, and and we don't mm-hmm. we don't you know we we talk. We talk the movie, but we don't over talk the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a little fun. I remember listening to the, the French Connection commentary that um, Roy and Gene Hackman did, and they talked about everything but the French Connection. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a fun listen. But yeah, anybody, like I said, and it's another, it's more people, um, um, you know, expressing their passion and, and sharing their passion. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Have you guys watched any of the recent interviews that were posted up? Yes. Those were, some of those were just amazing. Um, I think the one that impressed me the most, I sat and watched them, and some, you know, I just expected them to be good because I've heard never heard before. And, um, but when they brought up um, the director for Jaws 2, you know, mm-hmm. that guy is what, 92 years old yeah. or something like that? Is he, he really? Incredible. He's incredible. And if he didn't know something, he'd go, you know how long ago that was? I don't remember. I mean, he was sharp. I mean, you know, and and, and he answered a couple hard questions, you know, he, you know not only detail oriented, but so what actually happened between, you know, between you and uh, Scheider, you know, and, and even a little bit of like with him and Hancock and, and um, I, I was very, very impressed with his. I thought they were all excellent, but his was just incredible. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing I was saying earlier. You know, we we started Amy George Rue Wrestling five years ago, and we've spoken to John Hancock, Billy Van Zandt, Gary Springer, uh, Carl Gottlieb, Joe Alves, Jeff Voorhees, uh, uh, and I could go on and on. And, I mean, they don't have to do that. I mean, these people are so uh, approachable. And, you know, John Hancock, to me, was, was, was a revelation because we talked to him before on the phone, and if you guys spoke to him, he's very... Uh, uh, Short might not be the right word, but on the phone he was very just, just, just the facts. All right, there was no very like matter. you know, was very direct, very direct, very, yeah, very dry. But then we interviewed him, and I was like, I don't know how he's going to go because you know we're going to talk about Jaws two, and obviously what happened to him with Jaws two is pretty 
pretty crappy, right? Um, but he was great. He was a great guest, Re- really funny, had great stories, really opened up, and he wasn't kind of, as you would expect, to be a little bit bitter about what happened. I mean, you know, and that was 45 years ago, but still, it's kind of a kind of a crappy thing to happen. But he was great. He was a great guest. Yeah. I mentioned yeah. that when he had John on Let's Talk Jaws Live, and I mentioned in the book mm-hmm. that um, uh, his wife, Dorothy, Tristan, who, who passed thought, yeah. earlier this year, they invited me to their farm in Indiana, into their home. I mm-hmm. sat at their table. Dorothy brought me cookies and milk. And, <laughs> and, we, and we talked for like three hours. And he told the most amazing stories. And and I told him, I said, I, I, I appreciate you doing this because you don't have to. Because right. this is obviously a very painful part of, of, your, of your career. And, mm-hmm. and he has said that he thinks – losing Jaws 2 probably affected him in Hollywood. He might not have gotten movies that he wanted to do. But he was just uh, very straightforward, but but very friendly. And I've remained friends with him ever since. And um, he brought one of his movies down to Kansas City, where, where he was born, uh, mm-hmm. as a, for a screening, uh, you know, a test screening for an audience. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, the, you know, and, and, the, and the thing is, he never, he never told me how he got fired. Mm-hmm. He, he, he never, he just said we were on, you know, we were on the Island in the morning that night. We were in, Paris, in Italy and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I didn't press. Um, but then uh, it wasn't until I talked to Michael Butler who was there when everything happened that, that I found out what had happened. And I was like, how, how, how humiliating must that be? And yet still, still you're, 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 you're talking uh, about it 40, mm-hmm. 40 years later. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, John is is a is, is a great guy. He's um, you know he's uh, just won a, a an award, an LA uh, award for a screenplay he wrote. He still writes. Um, you know, uh, God bless him. Um, he'll send me stuff that he's written, and you know, mm-hmm. have you read it and say, hey, who would you cast in this? And I'm think you know I'm thinking to myself, never, never in my life going back though to Jaws. Never in my life would I think that a filmmaker whose work I admire would right. reach out to me and say, what do you think of this? So once again, it all comes back to, to it's the magic. It's, it's, it's the magic of Jaws. Mm-hmm. Well, and, that, and that's the thing. I mean, these, these folks don't have to do this. And a lot of these guys from the, from the original, from Jaws 1, they're in their 70s and 80s now. So they don't need to be doing this for some Facebook page. But, you know, I was, I was – and unfortunately, she cancelled. But I was invited just because I run a Jaws page to interview uh, Susan Backlinney uh, at, at this uh, FrankenCon in Knoxville a couple of weeks back. Um, and she cancelled. But like, like for me, from like a kid from London, where well, I saw this film when I was like four years old, to now be crossing paths with this person I've seen on the big screen, uh, uh, probably five hundred times I've seen this movie. You know, that's that's mind blowing to me. Like this, 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 you know. So I think it's just a, a couple of things. I think you you get back what you put out. If you put out positivity, I think eventually it comes back to you. But also, Absolutely. these people are just so magnanimous to to do this stuff. They don't have to do it. They, they don't have to do it. I mean, you know, Susan Backlin is in her seventies. I mean, Richard Rafe is in his seventies. I mean. These guys, you know, they, they're getting up there in years, so they don't have to do this. So the fact that they do is it's just absolutely it's, for me. It's thrilling. This means it's, it's fantastic. Mike, I remember. I do again, my opinion, for two reasons. Number one, because you know they they still have a little bit of fire there relating to that, and they appreciate that. And the other right. thing, the other reason, my mind are doing it right. is because they see your passion in that, and they see that mm. you genuinely enjoy that because they're not going to waste their time. You know, it's right. not like they own anyone anything. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike I, re- I remember when you had Car uh, Gottlieb on the, on the, I think it was Let's, Let's Talk Jaws, and and I got to meet him, and he was you know, you know like uh, he was so warm and, and and friendly, and I mean it was it was great, it was great, you know, uh, the information that he gave, and I mean, it was good, it was just great, it was a great moment. They're all super people. I mean, I okay. when I was in L.A. doing research, um, the second time, I took I took Carl to Carl to dinner. Mm-hmm. And I asked him and I, I said, Carl, I understand if you want to say no. I said, I don't have any money. I said, because we're, we're publishing this. I said, but would you write the foreword to my book? And he said, how many pages you need? And I was mm-hmm. like, wow. 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 
and that right. and, and being and Carl being associated with the book gave it gave it credibility. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of Jaws books out there, but you know, if if you see that on on the shelf and you go, oh, Carl Gottlieb did it, so yeah, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Credit. Jaws, you yeah, no doubt, sure. Amazing. A couple quick shout outs there to some some of our usual list, uh, regular listeners that are on. Just say hi to Sonia, Connor, Robert Song. Just sorry, I'm not trying to ignore anyone tonight. Just got four guys with a passion here, I guess. So, but, uh, <laughs> Victor, Victor, Victor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Vic's definitely there. Vic's over, yeah. Is that is that oh, Victor Mirabelli? Yes. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I know Victor. I know Victor. He's 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 famous. Yeah. He's very shy though. We've tried to get him to come on a couple times, and he. Oh, he is. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> I tried to get him on about two weeks ago. He got mad and started a bunch of fires, and we've been dealing with it ever since. I don't know. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do a show on, on Godfather Three. He'll come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet if we do, I bet if in two weeks back in the day, I bet if we do the Godfather, I bet. Uh-huh. I'll come on. Well, I did see somebody. Uh, somebody asked a question in there: Is Godfather one better than Jaws? And that's 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 a bit of a that's a bit of a I don't know. That's a t- that's a that's a that's a tough question yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that is that's a, yeah, exactly that's a chi- that's a chin scratcher right there. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't. I don't get Godfather the way a lot of people do. I think Whoa, good- easy, easy, wow. night. Let's not say oh. things we can't take back. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> not, not saying it's bad. I'm saying I don't quite get it as much as you guys do. I enjoy it. I like it. I truly do. Uh-huh. It, just, it just doesn't rank above Jaws. It doesn't. That's all I'm going to say. No more. Uh, it's, only, okay. fights. it's different. <laughs> to me, Jaws is my favorite film. And I okay. always refer to it as the greatest film ever made. But I've had people say, oh, you think it's better than Godfather? You think it's better than Citizen Kane? <laughs> well, so, so that right there, that's a great question. Is you know yeah. because it's your favorite doesn't mean does it mean it's the best? Like yeah. Jaws is my favorite movie, and I do think probably it's the best movie. But then you know if you ask me tomorrow, I might say you know Goodfellas is up there, Godfather's up there. There are yeah. some movies like I love. I love Halloween. I love. I'm a massive John Carpenter fan. I'm a massive horror fan. So yeah. depending on what day you ask me, my top five or top ten might be different. But Jaws, Jaws is a, is a, is a constant. Well, if you come to Kansas City, I will take you to the first theater in America that premiered, that played Halloween. Oh, my God. I need to get out of there. I mean, we went to Bowling Green, Kentucky, several years ago, uh, just on a whim, my wife and I, because we, we, we had a we had a, a jiu-jitsu seminar in, in, in uh, somewhere in Tennessee. Franklin, uh, was it Franklin, Tennessee? Somewhere in Tennessee, anyway. And I was like, well, we could drive back or we could drive two more hours to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where John Carpenter grew up, and I can, like – walk around fanboy for the next four hours and we did that and it was it was mm-hmm. great just to be just to be there where he, where John Carpenter grew up because I'm a, I'm a massive John Carpenter fan and I'm really like this is really nerdy and I hope you guys don't hate me but you know Billy Van Zant was married to Adrian Barbo who was also married to John Carpenter and I've come so close a couple of times saying hey Billy you got the hook up there with John Carpenter, but I think that's probably crossing crossing a line. So I haven't I haven't done that. But like for me, I'd be I'd talk to John Carpenter would be for me would be like I'd be in fanboy heaven. Yeah, Martin is he coming back to directing? I, I've heard some. So I so, so I did hear that he was doing a TV show, but I, I don't I don't know if that's true because I don't know. And again, this is just me fanboy. I don't know. Like he's been touring with his sons and his stepson, doing uh, mu- you know playing the, the all the music he composed for the movies. And I think his heart is more in that because he's not made a movie since what was the last one? Maybe uh, that the that Mars terrible Mar- the Mars movie, maybe or uh, he did that Body Bags anthology movie. But that, but there was nothing hit the heights of like you know during the late seventies he did you know obviously he did uh, uh, Salt and Precinct Thirteen Halloween The Fog Escape from New York Christine Big Trouble in Little China the, the Late Live Prince of Darkness I mean he was just Starman uh, he was just knocking him out of the park every movie and then he just he, he stopped so I, I don't I don't know I don't really know what happened there yeah. the thing yeah, I, yeah Big Trouble oh, Little yeah. China the thing oh, my God how could I forget those two yeah incredible movie yeah yeah. 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 Christine is still a big one for me. I know it's some people not as famous, but still, I mean, I can remember as a kid watching that. And I, I'm a car guy, grew up around cars, love that movie. I it's, got, it's, got, it's got the Jaws two connection with Keith Gordon, who was in Christine, played yeah. Arnie Cunningham, and is also in, in in Jaws two. I forget his character's name. Michael probably knows, but um, 
Donkey, there you go. <laughs> I like the fog, man. Oh, the fog. Oh, the fog. The fog, fog. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Fog's what a great, what a great movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, uh, let me move on to just a little bit of a little bit of pop culture here. Um, I yeah, you know, I don't know about with you guys, but yeah, you know, I, I was talking to Mike about this. Um, the relevancy of Jaws and how much it has really kind of come back around full circle. Um, and you know, Martin, as you mentioned earlier, the way it's it's starting to show up with with these newer generations. You know, everything from political stances to you know ecological stances like the picture of straws up in the corner you know and how we're ruining the, the planet and bringing it back um you know it, the bottom right hand corner picture i mean that is one of the best things i, I think that, that came out of covid i think that's one of the few things that made me smile it was 2020 was a fishing trip you know what i mean that was just absolutely, you know the relevancy and i would read articles it wasn't just in our community i would read articles you know in the paper it would pop up you know, in the news about the relevancy of Jaws and what happened with the mayor and the town and what was going on with COVID and, and the state of our of our country, let alone you know the world at the time, it was just unbelievable the way it was the way that it was able to resurface. And now, you know, you were talking, and, I, I, and I'm going. I have to look. I think I'm going the beginning of August. Um, you know, to see you know the shark is broken up in New York City. I mean, who'd have thought that would have came out across the pond? You know, they were supposed to do a handful of showings, got so big, they strung a bunch of extra shows. They just skipped over to Canada. It went to Canada, and I'm going, oh, man, if that comes stateside, I am there. And I I don't know if Mike posted it or you posted it. or Somebody posted it on one of the Joe sites, and within 45 minutes, I was purchasing tickets and trying to get a hotel room. I mean, it just, you know, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And it can yeah, be yeah, I mean, we're going to September, you know, so it started off in Scotland uh, in like a really small, small theatre. And actually, me and a couple of people from that Mage Oars group actually sent money to help them get it off the ground. I think we sent like $50, 50 dollars or 50 pounds and we got mentioned in the in the uh, in the in the uh, program my name is in the program really 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 no small kidding. but yeah but it's in the program me and a couple of people did it and um, so i have a program here in the in the in the george room and then it went to london and then it went to canada and now it's in new york um and of course ian shaw you know and of course ian shaw's on the amity george group and you know i said and i tagged him in my post said hey we're coming to see you in september and he was like well make sure you, you come out and, and talk to us and i want to talk to you and stuff and so i mean that's that's just the and he doesn't need to do that obviously you know ian shaw is not robert shaw but he comes from very good stock and this this mm -hmm. this play has done phenomenally i mean he's playing for i think maybe four months in in on broadway I mean that's pretty legit. Probably so get extended. Yeah. probably get extended if the reviews yeah. are as good as they were in London. Yeah, yeah. I mean the reviews have been phenomenal. So I, I mean I literally cannot wait. Um, you know, I've been flying up to New York in September. Uh, me and my wife and and Robin, who's one of the uh, moderators on the page, and her husband, we're, we're going to meet up. And that's another thing. You know, Robin has become a great friend to me, and I didn't, I, and and I know her through Jaws. I mean, so it's it's just. It, you know, it's like the jelly of the month club, right? It's the it's the gift that keeps on giving all year long. You know, mm -hmm. all three of you, all three of you, I met because of Jaws. That's right, yeah, exactly, oh. exactly. So it's, yeah. it's 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 a it's a great thing. I mean, you're making friendships from a movie forty eight years ago. I mean, you know, we're all. I don't know where you guys are. You know, in in, in relation in the states, but I mean, I'm in Alabama, from England. I think M Michael, you're in. Where are you in Ohio? Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City. Missouri, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Michigan, yeah. where, where, where are Michigan, Keith? Yeah, uh, uh, Detroit, near Detroit. Uh, so I was in Detroit like two weeks ago. I went up there, uh, took my took my dad up there because uh, yeah. my dad raised me on the Motown music. So I, I took my dad up there to go to to to, to Hitsville. Wow, yeah. uh, it was yeah. amazing. I mean, I Detroit was yeah. great. I was telling Mike that uh, I am I work like walking distance from the Motown. Yeah, we were we were talking about that like last week. Talking Motown. No way. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I can walk to that Motown you that, that Motown site. From that's Motown. crazy. So we so so we stayed and obviously we stayed in the Siren Hotel, which is right around the corner from Comerica Park, uh -huh. and um, the the Breakman Bar. We I mean we Detroit Detroit so far exceeded my expectations because you know I'm you know well I know from London I was like oh Detroit oh let's be careful we only get shot or something but right. it was it was phenomenal. We I absolutely loved it. We, we we and I'm getting way off topic, but we took a we took a cat or we took a, a car over and went into Windsor Ontario for the day. It was we had a phenomenal time. It was brilliant. 
Yeah. Yeah. This one depends what side of the eight mile road you're on. Is that right? Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't eat. I don't eat mum's spaghetti, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, I'm in Central Pennsylvania. Any of you guys ever come to Central Pennsylvania? Um, not saying that because we're sitting here live. You drive me a line. I will make sure that. You know, Definitely be a host. Well, I mean, regardless, we're all going to meet in two years at Martha's Vineyard, right? I mean, that's that's oh, a done deal, right? Right. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, yeah. We were mm -hmm. supposed to go next summer. We are diverting because of that. We we will be there. We're doing. We're actually looking at doing two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We we had a trip planned in uh, 2020 with the Amity Jaws Group. We had people coming from all over, and then of course COVID happened, and and that all got sure. cancelled. When we had T-shirts designed with Amity Jaws Group 2020, and it all it all went you know belly up because of COVID. But you know we'll, we'll be there in two years, no doubt. Well, uh, I mean I will be for sure, and I know there'll be some people from the group that want to get up there as well. So it should be it should be a uh, should be a fun time. Be know, oh, it's de definitely yeah, going to be there. Speaking yeah. out loud here, but once something is actually announced. And you get a dates and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, forty of us rented a five house compound. You know, seventeen, eighteen yeah. years ago, we can do that again because it, it it averaged out. I think it averaged out at the time to three hundred dollars a person for a week. For a week oh, wow. on Amity wow. House. Wow! On wow! Wow! In a house oh, with a pool. If we can do that. I will bring a tent and sleep out in Donna's yeah. backyard. Three hundred bucks a week. I don't think you can because I think her property butts up with um, President Obama's. I don't, I don't know how far you get. Yeah, right, right, right in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I can get you. Yeah. He's a Jaws fan. Yeah. Hey, you never. Yeah, you never know. You never know. But well, yeah, we're I'm looking forward to that. We'll definitely do that. And uh, I know you guys, you know, Michael, you've been in touch with the, uh, the with the um, Martha's Vineyard, I guess the uh, tourist board up there. Uh, you know, so just just keep us in the loop, please, because uh, you know we we do intend on taking some people up there from Amity Jaws Group. Um, you know, m myself and my wife will be there definitely. But I know there are other people in the group that definitely want to go. So just keep mm -hmm. us in the loop um, as as you oh. find things out. Yeah, as soon as I hear yeah, something, I guess, definitely. Uh, the, only, the only thing I've heard officially is that they want to do something. But you know it's two years off, so they really can't start planning anything. Right, more. right, right. All, right. The, all the Universal Court, and once Universal yeah, and them right. get together and they figure something out, we'll we'll be sure to spread the word. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. We we'll definitely have to kind of definitely have to kind of cross ways. And and I apologize, Martin, if I seem a little ignorant to to some of your site. I mean, I, you know, I'm familiar with it, but I honestly I'm gonna have to go back and, and uh, do some more digging. But I, um, you know. Oh no, you're you're you're, you're the to it's totally fine. Listen, it, you, know, you know, I don't have an ego with this. I'm, you know, like I said at the start. I mean, it's all about spreading the Jaws word. You, you know, you know. I think the people in the Jaws world that are kind of insular and want to keep. I don't own Jaws. I don't own Jaws at all. You know, I'm just a fan here, want to spread the word. So, you know, I'm expecting us to be, you know. The a number one, whatever, but you, you, you know we're we're getting big. We're, we're almost ninety thousand people. Um, it's a good it's a good page. So you know, we, if you if you're not a part of it, please be a part of it. We'd love to have you there, and Absolutely. we'll just we'll just keep encouraging each other, right? The growth for all of us. And Michael, I've got to congratulate and, and Keith, congratulate you guys. You guys have been growing like weeds the past yeah. past couple of months. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know. Keith's like you know, sending people dollars or. I'm probably over. He, I, he posted I'm last week. I think he said he's yeah. willing to pay for the ferry ride over if they show up. Yeah, so that's <laughs> but I'm, I'm hoping we hit. I'm hoping we hit five thousand by the end of end of June. Yeah. I bet you will. You're close, right? You're what? You're four four thousand five hundred. Close to that, right? Forty seven, forty eight hundred. You'll, Dang, no, you know, you'll be there, no yeah, problem. You'll be there, no problem. I mean, just, just, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, it, 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 I don't know what's happened. We, we, we've exploded recently as well. I mean, we, we were always consistent, but we've added probably, we hit eighteen thousand June first, and I think right now we're at eighteen, eighteen five, eighteen six. We've had six hundred people this month, which is, and I've not done any advertising. It's just, it's just what it is. I mean, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And not, not to be negative about anything jaws related, but I think. People get, you know, a, a good vibe from our pages. Yeah. Miami Jaws Group and Keith's Jaws page and, mm -hmm. and Jaws 50 and mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Jimmy Lovato's, you know, Jaws Paradise and the Daily Jaws because we just talk Jaws. We don't talk bad about anybody. We don't, right. you know, we don't make uh, Leave the politics foolish out. claims. 
we just have fun, and that's that's what we're here for. But this yeah. is the thing. Look at look at this tonight. I mean, Michael, you and I have spoken, and I, obviously I know Keith. You know, Keith. I, I know of Keith, and, and and you know, I'm getting to know Nate. But the four of us have been on here talking for an hour, like we've known each other for years. So it's just you, you know. You know, so it's just, I think cool, it's cool people. It's a phenomenal movie. And I think it's just, I think it's just spreading positivity. I just think that's what it is. You, I firmly believe, I said this before, what you get back, what you put out. If you put out neg negativity and BS and just crap, that's what you're going to get back. But if you put out positivity and, you know, decency, especially in today, and, you know, like I said at the beginning, Facebook can be so toxic. And if you, if you yeah. latch onto that, right. man, it's just, it's just, it's just terrible. So do you, if you just ignore that crap and you keep politics and, bullshit out, out of it positivity comes back to you i really believe that absolutely and i haven't called you ross once yeah no you didn't but nate did and i'm a little pissed off but i'll be all right i'll be okay with that <laughs> i'll buy the first round we're on the island I there, there you go there you go you're you probably better not buying ross the first round <laughs> <laughs> Well, i uh you know it kind of rounds out what i really wanted to you know talk about and, and really kind of wrap up and finish up with this is, is really two things. Uh, one is, you know, what kind of an impact have you kind of left on, on the, those around you? And, and I know for me personally, my family, whether they were into it or not, have, have all, I mean, just all become a part of Jaws, part of Martha's Vineyard. I mean, you know, my son has a poster hanging up in his room. I mean, you know, if, if the movie's playing somewhere, you know, my wife, you know, she's going to go and, and, you know, and tag along. And there's a, a picture of my son and I running the, running the rocks there, you know, next to the bridge. There's us seeing the movie, you know, on the island. And, and also then, you know, community-wise, you know, the community that we have is just, it, it's obvious, you know, like tonight, you know, you know, we've got what almost seems to be like, you know, three or four different community choice communities. Here we are. We're one. It's not separate. You know what I mean? Right. You know, you know the, the impact that you have on others, you know, I'm a school teacher. Right? You know, I tell the kids all the time, I'm like, your, your consequences, you know, are, are a direct result of your actions. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, to me, holds true. And, you know, and I have one respect with my kids, and that is, or one, one rule, and that is be respectful. You know, and I say, ask yourself, when you're doing something, saying something, am I being respectful? If the answer is um, no, or I'm not sure, you probably shouldn't be doing it because you're not going to get a good reaction out of that, you know? And so, and I think that just kind of follows through. And I, and I think what we're seeing is a massive result of that here. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I agree. Yeah, completely. Absolutely. You know, something very interesting happened uh, to me. I posted uh, on the 48th uh, anniversary of Jaws. I posted, you know, this huge marquee with the big Jaws letters and, you know, these maybe 1,200 people waiting in line to see the movie. Right, so I posted that right on Facebook. And, and one of my friends, whom I know from my childhood, um, he made a comment of saying, yeah, man, I remember you used to talk about Charles all the time when we were kids, when we were growing up. So it amazes me how this thing carries up into my adulthood. And, and, and that's one of the things about Jaws is it has such a legacy. It has such a phenomenon that, even today, you know, we're, we're four, four of us are sitting here and we're clicking and we're coming together and we're talking about the film. I mean, this film has such an amazing legacy, amazing legacy. Uh, well, I go to Tampa and I run into somebody that I haven't seen in 40, God, I'm, uh, 45 years since I graduated, but they'll see, they'll see, if they recognize me, we talk, hey, it's Jaws, hey, Jaws, how you doing? My, my yearbook, my yearbook is it, everything signed to Jaws. There's like two or three to Mike. Everything else is, hey, Jaws, have a great summer. Uh, that's great. Right. Yeah. Which has been a part of our lives for, you know, it's almost like I can't remember a time when Jaws wasn't a part of my life. Well, that's what we said earlier. It's just, it's just, it gives you, it's like a friend, right? It gives you some kind of warmth, some kind of comfort. Maybe you remember seeing it with your grandmother or your grandfather who's now, now gone and it gives you a warm memory of that. I mean, it's, it, 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 it it's, it's more than a film. It, it's it, it's broken through just a film. It's it's a part of it's a part of society. Not not to get too deep and intellectual of it, but intellectual about it. But it is. We we all you know. I don't remember a time when Jaws wasn't in my life. I saw it when I was probably 
uh, four or five when it got re-released in 1978 in London, in England. I remember seeing it with my grandma, who's deceased, and my aunt, who's an active member of, of the Amity Jaws group. And mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of memories about it because I was very young, but I do have a memory of going to see it, you know, four or five years old, which probably wasn't the best parenting ever. But, you know, it was the 70s, so it was a different time, right? right. Jeff Kramer, if, if a kid comes up to uh, Jeff at a convention and he always asks them, how, how old were you when you first saw Jaws? And if they give like, you know, eight or nine or, or younger than that, he always yells at the parents, go, what kind of parents are you? <laughs> yeah, I saw it when it came on when it came out on ABC, which was which was late seventies. So I was quite young. My mom did not want me to my stepdad, who loved this stuff, let me watch it, you know, um, unbeknownst to her. And mm -hmm. um, I've had friends over the years, you know, you have kids and you know, you're your friends because the kids are friends and who've come and said Hey, you know, my son asked about that shark movie. Can I can I borrow Jaws? And and some of these kids are like four years old, five years old. I'm like, I don't <laughs> think I, my son watched it till he was like seven or eight because I didn't want him terrified, you know, or be afraid to go in the water. Yeah, this, 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 the seventies and early eighties was a different time. I mean, the amount mm -hmm. of horror movies I watched as a kid, uh, you, you know, and so far I've not turned into a serial killer, you know, but you know, there's still there's still time for that to happen, you know. <laughs> Mark, there's a question here for you. What is what's your opinion of Jaws two? I actually love Jaws two. Jaws two to me uh, captures some of the eff essence of Jaws one. I think because Roy Scheider, Lorraine G Gary's in there, and I think unpopular opinion. I think the Jaws two soundtrack is probably equal or maybe better yeah. than the Jaws one soundtrack. It, I think it's phenomenal. The opening scene with the two divers and that with the way that crescendo builds, and you know, and Michael, we spoke about this um, when you came on. And I think Jaws 2 is, you know, it came out four months before Halloween. And I think it, I think it's one of the earlier slasher movies because basically it's a, it's a killer in the shape of a shark after a bunch of teenagers, right? Yeah, exactly. The first teenagers to get killed are Eddie, or is Eddie, right? Eddie and Tina are trying to get, get it on. You know, Eddie gets killed, which follows in a lot of these later slasher movies. I mean, Black Whoa. Christmas came... You know, Black Christmas came in 74. Bay of Blood came, I think, 69. So there were mm -hmm. slasher movies prior to Jaws 2. Prior but to I think it's always sex. Premarital sex gets you killed. It's exactly right. So it, it does have a lot of those tropes that came in later movies. I don't know that that was the intent when they made the movie, but I do think Jaws 2 catches a lot of the uh, feeling of Jaws, of, of Jaws, where I think Jaws 3 and certainly Jaws 4 does. And Jaws 4, to me, is just, it, it, it's, it's oh, well, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to cuss too much, but Jaws, Jaws of Revenge is, 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 a, is, a, is a pile of steaming cow shit. It just really is. You know, and, and I've talked, and I, and I know we're over time, and I'm sorry, guys, but, you know, I've talked about Jaws 3 and Jaws 4 a lot. And I think I would enjoy I would enjoy enjoy Jaws three if it was called something like Shark at Sea World. I'd enjoy it for that. Or Jaws Revenge was called like Voodoo Shark or some crap like that. But the fact that it carries the Jaws moniker upsets me because they're not fit to 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 be in that franchise, in my opinion. So but Jaws, like Jaws two, like Halloween three. You know, if they just called it Caesar the Witch, which I like Halloween right. three. But a lot of people. Are like, that's exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly right. The fact that you're you're tacking it on to this really successful, great franchise, and I don't think Halloween Two is a great movie, but it does capture some of Halloween. Uh, maybe not suspenseful. They replace the suspense with with more gore. You know, the needle in the eye and all that kind of stuff. But um, if they, if, yeah, if they call Jaws Three, you know, Shark and Sea World, it's like Sharknado. Those movies are terrible, but I enjoy them because they're they're not supposed to be Jaws. They're supposed to be silly. It's a flipping tornado with sharks in it. Let's not let's not get high brow about it. Let's just enjoy it for what it is, right? So I think if they weren't weren't called Jaws Three and Jaws of Revenge, I'd probably enjoy them for what they are. But then they, they for me they're not fit to be in the Jaws franchise. My opinion. If you disagree. Hey, more power to you. You're wrong, but more power to you. <laughs> so, Martin, how do you really feel? <laughs> I know exactly. Right? I know. I get passionate about this stuff, Keith. Don't don't get me wound up. No, no I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I think there's certain things that, that I can go. Okay, I, I like how that was done. Or like uh, Jaws of Revenge, like the first 15 minutes, I I'm okay with. So I think when they're, on so attacks, on, okay. they're on the vineyard. They're in Edgar Town. After that. I'm done. Uh, yeah. well, I, I, I have two questions. As 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 the the only English guy here with three Americans, I have two questions. Yes. Have you guys ever played standoff? What is that bullshit all about? 
That that's no one ever no. has played standoff ever, right? No. I no. Know. No. Okay. No. And also in, in Jaws with the Charlie and the holiday roast. Do you guys have a roast on July 4th? Like a, a, a no, right? I've never heard of that in the 20 years I've been living in the States. No. No, no. you you you, you, you grill something. Yeah. 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 So you have a grill, the grill times in this hand, and you have a beer in this hand. That's all I have. Okay, yeah. so I'm making sure that like you guys won't keep it secret from me as as a foreigner. Like you guys will, you guys will playing stand off behind my back and eating holiday roasts. But that yeah. okay, that obviously doesn't happen. So I feel I feel better now. Yeah, I never, that's the first time I actually thought about that. I never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's my wife's holiday roast. Who's eating roast on July Fourth? I've been here twenty oh. years. No person has ever had a flipping roast on July Fourth. <laughs> Though to be fair. Like, Though to be fair, she may have bought it for Christmas and just had it in the freezer. Well, that thing wasn't frozen, Michael. He put that he put that meat hook in it pretty oh, easily. Okay. Yeah, he did, and and yeah, yeah. And there's there's a couple phrases in there that kind of like I, I got to say to this day. So oh, I need a rocking chair one time. I'm like, who is that? first of all, who's throwing that rocking chair? Who has a rocking chair in the boat? Let alone <laughs> over the boat, and a tiger shark is going to eat the rocking chair. I, I can see a lot of things going on, but a rocking chair that just only struck me funny every time I hear it. I'm like, well, that's a good question for Carl. The genius. Where did he come up with that? With that, he must have ad lib that. There's no way that was in the script, you know. That's a good yeah. question for Carl. The roast question. You know, he'll 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 file it along with the people that always ask. Is it true John Milius wrote the Indianapolis speech? Oh, God. Don't, yeah. get, him don't get him started on that. Oh. Yeah, but he'll, yeah, but go ahead, and, go ahead and ask Carl. So why, why would they have a roast on the – yeah, where'd that yeah. roast come from? Yeah. Just, yeah, just, hey, just the things that occurred to me as, as, an, as a non-American, I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to go to a bar and play some standoff. I'm not seeing that shit ever anywhere. <laughs> And maybe maybe the roast was frozen because it seemed like the hook didn't, didn't yeah. want to go I'm in. Thinking, well, yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know. I'm thinking back at, at Jaws Fest and Carl's signing and we're sitting there talking to him. And this guy comes up and he's gives him the book and Carl's signing it. And he goes, so is it true John Milius wrote the Indianapolis speech? Oh. And Carl, <laughs> he goes like, no, really angry signature. And he goes, <laughs> Chapter 27 of the book you just bought, and he threw it at him. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I have a suggestion or a request here. I mean, this is this has been so much fun. I, I, you know, I don't think we need to do this every week, but let, we, I think we need to do this more more often. Like, get the four of us together and have a chat about and stuff. I, I think it. this has oh, been great. Absolutely. This has been great fun. Love it. Yeah, love it. Definitely, absolutely. Yeah, I would, I would be down for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah I would love to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Love yeah. to do that. Hey, we, we got a quick question here. Sorry, I've been kind of a little lazy on the comments. Plus, what happened to the stern chair? Speaking of things that come up, this is a, a, a question that comes up a lot. You know, the fighting chair disappears right. in Orca. I, I don't, don't can't say I'm a professor on the Orca, but just you know, have, had a bass boat for a long time. And a lot of times, in fact, if you even look in the movie, there's a little box right where that right where that chair, that fighting chair, it's removable, right? Yeah, they're removable posts. Yeah. I know my my bass boat, you know my 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 casting deck, which is carpeted. You know, you can sit there, swivel around. When you're done, you just pull it out and store it somewhere. But a lot of people come up and argue, and they think that that's like a, I don't know, like like that's like a problem with the movie, where like maybe like the Orca one had the fighting chair and the Orca two didn't, and maybe that was like a continuity error. So I just I just wanted to kind of answer that question oh. and i know yeah. in, real, in real life it it, res, uh, it resides in the basement of a friend of mine uh outside of boston and i've mm -hmm. sat, yeah, in, sure I've sat in it yeah. and i've held the rod and if you go to my pages you'll you'll see me in it but yeah that's, mm -hmm. that's a good question people do say what happened to the charity throw it overboard yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. people people ask a lot of, too about you know when hooper is uh in that uh, examination room, and he picks up the arm and he says, oh, yeah. "What happens?" Yeah, and 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 it seems like there's a cut that's missing. Yeah, and they, and they oh, have, yeah. you know what 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 was supposed to be in there? You know, I, I, me personally, I I don't have the well. Um, two things. I mean, Spielberg has admitted to the fact that he he cut some things out. 
But even more so to uh, to address that entire scene, you know, you think that all that's left is that one little tray with the arm. Right. Um, and he even talks about, you know, the portion of the rib cage is still intact. Um, if, if you guys get on and listen to some of the Jaws Obsession podcast, he does an entire episode on that. And mm -hmm. he breaks it down to actually bringing the sound from the movie. And supposedly, this is the idea of the theory. They actually had two bins sitting there. And when he walked in, there was a larger one mm -hmm. that had the torso that was already uncovered. Uh, and then uh, you know, the smaller one out with the arm. And I don't remember all the details, but if you sit and watch it, I'm going, he might have, he might have, like, you know, he might be, he might be spot on with that. So apparently, because I guess that was supposed to be part of the actual script, because I mean, he says the words. So why, why would he just lift an arm up? Why wouldn't yeah. you see a little more of that? Or maybe it was because it was there, but maybe, it, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to keep it from being an R rated movie. I don't know. Real, yeah. really interesting yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, there Andy we Hill, go. I should get my cat. Andy Hill, he was I a cat. I heard there was a cat on the show. I thought I'd swing by and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, well, guys. Um, hey, listen. I, I hate to kind of head things off um, and, and wrap things up. I'm having an absolute blast here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this, this was this was phenomenal. This was so much oh fun. My God. Yeah, and we're yeah, out, yeah. hour and twenty one minutes. So we've got twenty one minutes past the hour. I mean, and it's just been it's been it's been great. I and mean, I definitely I'd love to do this again. Just let me know where I need to be, I'll be there. Yeah. Three more minutes. Yeah, Three more minutes and we'll be the uh the same length as Jaws. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <there you> <laughs> Mike's back. <laughs> Mike's back, yeah. Mike's back. I think we're better than Jaws. I think we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, Keith and Martin, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. We will yeah, thank you guys. You. Thanks so much. I only got called Ross once tonight, which is a which is a bonus. Maybe next time it won't be it'll be Martin the whole way through. <laughs> I'm the new guy. I'm the new guy. Sorry. You call Nate you call Nate Ned next time. <laughs> Ned, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, hey, thanks, Ned. Appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Martin, Martin, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, really, you, really good. Thank you. Thank you. My, pl my pleasure. One hundred percent, my pleasure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really enjoyed it. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And people at home, if you haven't, please get on and check his site out. I know I'm going to be definitely diving into it. Keith, as always, always good to see you. Always good to hear you laugh and smile. Yeah, and, 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 you know, Mike. You, you know, I mean, you guys are the reason that I'm here because I am a fan. I just. I want to jump in and try and help out a little bit. It's the only reason I'm here. And right. you guys are all big influences on me. You guys, yeah. all important to me. And listen, I, it, all BS aside, I hope in two years we're sitting around at a table having this conversation. No, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. We will be there. We can do this show live from the wharf. Hey. Yeah. There you oh, go. That would know. be great. Yeah. I will buy the first round, gentlemen. Yeah. All righty. We're all sitting around drinking Derek and set. Fins there you up, go. <laughs> Fins up, uh, Joe's family. Thank you very much um, yep. for tonight. Uh, you guys are awesome. You people at home, you guys are awesome too. Thanks for hanging out, listening to his gab here for the last hour and a half. And what a wonderful night! And we will definitely have to do some more of this. So, no doubt. See you guys again. Everyone have a great night. Fins up. I'll uh, I'll wrap it up here and uh, take care. Have a good evening. Thanks, guys. Take care. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah.